Welcome to the Right Start Math family. Many know Right Start Math as the hands-on curriculum, you know, the one with the abacus, also known as the Cotter abacus. And truly, the abacus does help students understand and visualize math facts and processes. However, to be effective, it must be used correctly. So in this video, I am going to show you some tips on how to correctly use side one of the abacus. Now in the curriculum, one of the first things that students learn is how to clear the abacus. Here are some pictures of the abacus. Which one do you think is cleared correctly? This one is the correct choice. The abacus should be cleared so that all of the beads are aligned to the right under the AL symbol. By the way, AL stands for Activities for Learning, Right Start Math's company name. There is a common error when moving beads across the wire. See if you can identify the correct way to move the beads across the wire. When asked to enter the quantity of three, some of your students may enter one bead at a time. One, two, three. Some of your students may enter three beads all at once. Which way is correct? The beads should be moved all at once in one group. However, because children are so used to counting, the first time they use an abacus, they will most likely count each bead as they enter them. Your response should be something like, great job. Now, let's see if you can enter the quantity without counting. You may even need to guide your student to place their finger on the quantity and scoot all of the beads over in one group. This is an important step to the student's learning. While it may not seem like a big thing, moving all of the beads all at once helps the students develop subitizing and visualization skills. It helps them see the quantity as a whole and not as individual parts. They will also be able to solve problems much faster. One of the most frequently asked questions that we get regarding the use of the abacus is, how do I know if my student is using it too much? Well, in the beginning, your student will need to use the abacus all the time as they become familiar with it and begin to apply their knowledge in a brand new way. Over time, when they consistently and correctly use the abacus, they will establish a mental visualization of the quantities and math facts. Just like you have a mental image of your kitchen, even without having to run into the room to see it. Once they've been using the abacus for a good while, they will automatically pull themselves off the abacus. If you were to ask your student what eight plus seven is, and they do not know the answer, encourage them to use the abacus. When doing so, they will see that these blue beads equal 10, these yellow beads equal five, making eight plus seven, 15. Now over time, they will begin to develop this image in their mind. And so when they are asked what eight plus seven is, they will visualize this and see that 10 and five is a total of 15, making eight plus seven, 15. What do you do if you suspect that your student is using the abacus as a calculator? Periodically, you may have a student who does not want to think, so they will use the abacus constantly and they do not actually think about the problem being asked. These students could be using the abacus as a crutch and not using the abacus for visualization and pairing it up with strategies to solve the problem. How do you know? Ask questions. Ask the student how they got the answer. If they just show you the abacus, pull more information from them by asking what strategy they use or to describe the bead combination. If they are unable to answer your questions, then they may be too reliant upon the abacus. Here are some ways that you can help them reduce their dependency on the physical abacus. 
first. Start by using the abacus all the time. Premature removal of the abacus will actually hinder future progress. Second, let the student look at the abacus, but not physically touch the abacus. Move the abacus to a location where they can see it, but they cannot touch it. To solve math facts, they need to mentally move the beads or picture the beads being moved. Third, then remove the abacus from the student's sight, but let them move air beads or imaginary beads in their mind. They picture the abacus in their mind and they physically move the pretend beads. By the way, this step tends to be a very short one because many students feel a little silly doing it. Finally, they've got it. They do not need to use the abacus as a crutch. We hope that this has helped you get a better idea of how to help your students use the Cotter abacus successfully. If you have any questions or special situations, please do not hesitate to contact us. We are here to help you have a great and successful school year.